Should stop podcast. You stupid. T h i s y o u r s t o p podcast. I did just like that on social medias, the internet, but specifically like the ocean on YouTube. It's free. I swear to God, I'm Machine Gun Johnny, Johnny Tsunami, Boston Johnny, Johnny Leyenda. You can call me what you want, but can't call me fake. And don't call me for friends, because I ain't got it. And don't adjust your smartphones, because we outside today, and you see my co-host is missing. He's trying to play Steven Spielberg over here. <laughs> Say what's up to the people. Because you already know who it is. Okay, superstar. And you see we got a special guest looking out cute and stuff. Yeah, I'm looking like hey. y'all daddy out here. <laughs> oh, girl, <of> <laughs> <laughs> Tell the people who you are, please. I'm Faring, Fariet. From Boston, mm. Roxbury, Dorchester, you know, I'm just gonna say Boston, but that's who I am. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Glad to be here. Thank you for spending some time with us outside. Where can yeah. people find you? Y'all can find me on Instagram, Fariex Wisdom, on Twitter, Fariex, or oh, I am Fariex, on Facebook, I am Fariex, on all platforms at Fariex. Thank you for keeping yes. it simple for us. I <laughs> do. Pretty goddamn simple. You know, if you want to um, do business with me, I am Farias at gmail.com. Thank you kindly. Yeah. And they can reach you directly. You got management, or they can just reach out to you like. I definitely something. have management. Okay. Um, but you can reach me directly. I am Farias at gmail.com. All right. So you said um, Boston, Dorchester, Roxbury, Mattapan. Not Mattapan. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Does that change? I don't know. No, no, no change. Alright, no, love Mattapan. Sorry, yeah, okay. No, 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 but we no, do it just like, again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we had an accent, so tell us where else you have planted your flag. Yeah, so, um, although I was raised here in Boston, I left a long time ago and moved down south to Atlanta. So I was going back and forth from East Oakland to Atlanta mm-hmm. for like 20 years. So, if you hear an accent, that's where it's from. 20 years? Yeah. May we ask how old you are or what generation you identify with? I know it's I'm an eighties baby. Yeah. yeah. Call somebody. I'm an eighties baby. <laughs> Damn, shout out all eighties babies. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you said you moved twenty years ago. Is that because of family or when did you start actually taking this thing serious? Is that why you moved? Nah, I actually um taking it serious when I was a teenager, but I kept getting locked up. And um, it was just kind of messing stuff up with me, you know what I mean? So I knew that in order for me to grow, I had to leave. Because mm-hmm. I was just always into some shit out here, you know? So I left, and I went back west first. Mm-hmm. I started taking it seriously when I went back west. Mm-hmm. Because there was um, obviously people that I knew, but they wasn't doing the things I was doing here. Yeah. You understand know what I'm saying? So I was able to just get in the studio and start working with certain folks or whatever. And um, I took it seriously there, and then I really went hard at it when I went to the A. Okay. You know, which mm-hmm. was in like 2007. Mm-hmm. But you had family in all these places, so you kind of had family. roots. You wasn't just a yeah. nomad like me. Just yeah, going I had, all around. I place. had family in, in the Bay, had family in the A, um, more like friends, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But they still family. Right. That's what I did. And I always, wherever I go, I make it my home. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I think that's the these baby shit. Yeah. Like when yeah. your friends are your family, you don't differentiate. No, I you don't. Know what I mean? Everyone's family. Everyone's mm-hmm. family. Mm-hmm. If you know me since, you know, little cool days, little sandbox days, you're my family. Period. You know, I don't say this is my family. I just mm-hmm. don't say that. Or my half brother and half sister. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Definitely when not that. you traveling, do you be traveling like far as you do your music everywhere? Like Oakland, Atlanta, like so you just sitting up here recording and kind of. I travel different places, but my main studio is actually in Worcester. Um, I deal with Alejandro Fontanez Recordings, and he's a, a pretty well-known person in the industry. He's worked with hitters like Jennifer Lopez, the Fugees, um, Wu-Tang, etc. cetera, mm-hmm. Y&B, whatever his name is, Corday, mm-hmm. you know what I mean, all those folks or whatever. So he's a, you know, he he's actually was the main engineer for um, the Rolling Out okay. concert. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. So he's a dope ass engineer, you know what I mean? Good producer, but I don't get my beats from him. He just more so does Makes my engineering. Sound, yeah. yeah, he does my engineering and stuff like that and he's dope. So that's why I record it. When I'm in Atlanta, you know, I'm recording on East Side. If I'm in the Bay, I'm recording what you recording on. So that's kind of, uh, hold up, wait, you, know what I mean? you do what? We'll try to, to drop, drop that, that shit real quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's that like? I mean, he's family, so mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, it's just it's all it's all family. My stuff 
grandfather's, like his uncle or whatever. Okay, so it wasn't like you were meeting someone like, y'all about to recall with 40, you already were familiar with them. Familiar with folks. Okay, I'm okay. Familiar with a few folks in the back, so. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. sweet. Yeah. What would you describe your, I listen to your music, but what would you tell the people, if you had to, your style is? Because I couldn't find a good one when I was listening, trying to tell him, like, it's like, R&B, but she can spit. Like, I don't know. I yeah, wouldn't know. So right. you tell me. You know what? Honestly, so many people ask me that question. And I can never give them a real good answer to it. Um, I would definitely say that, um, like, my first album was called Hood Classic, Brian Season. Mm -hmm. So I would definitely say that my style is real hoodish. Hood Classic. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Um hardcore but with like a sexy edge to it. Yep, yep, yep. You know what I'm saying? That's kind of like what I heard right there. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Some hardcore shit but like, you know, sexy with it. Yeah, you know it's definitely hardcore with a sexy edge. It could be because due to some of the people I grew up listening to. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm real political at the same time. Very conscious. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I'm saying? But then I got that other side of me, that, that yeah, street yeah. side. You well know? rounded. Yeah. I like that. Very diverse. Yeah, I like yeah. that we can't pinpoint it. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. You can do move in any, you know. Yeah, I can do any, anything I want to do. I can do drill if I want to. I'm just not a drill artist. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I definitely can tear up some drill shit. But I just don't do that. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And, um, I can do any type of gangster music if I want to. Because that's what I once was, something like that. But I don't do that. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So you go with the flow, like where you're at. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's right. <laughs> Where I'm at at that moment. Yes. Yeah. Like, right now, I've been on some want to have sex and, and, and love the black man. So, mm -hmm. this is what I've been talking a lot about. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, that's just what, that's that's what's been on my mind. Love, word, the black man. Yes. I'm glad you're yeah. conscious of that. That's real yeah, shit. That's, that's all that has been on my mind. So, I'm okay. like, I'm going to talk I'm about go it. I'm going to go there. I like mm -hmm. that. I like that. Yeah, well, I want to make that type of hip hop that that's going to make you want to have sex. Mm hmm. With that one person. I'm not talking about being missing. a thought. Yeah, that shit's missing that. Mm -hmm. Everything's some thought shit now. Yeah, I'm not, uh-uh. No, I want you to want to go home and have sex with your wife or your husband or your man or your baby, whatever, mm -hmm. that person. Mm -hmm. right. You know, I don't want you to be like, oh shit, I'm about to go get a couple niggas in the club. And no. Right, right. No. Now no. how's that like with you making that type of music but everything being like so trashy right so now? So my next question. Like that being in right now, like, you know what I'm saying? The trash, well, sorry, the like the ratchet rap the and ratchet the rap. drill because that's what's happening. So how do you stay firm? I just stand my ground. That's it. Cause best believe, I got hella people telling me you should do this. Mm -hmm. You should do this. You you look like this. You look good. You look, you should do this. But I'm not doing that. That's it. I'm just not doing it. You know what I mean? And I know it's been hard for me to kind of get into the door doing what I'm doing, but I've been in the door though. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I've been working with certain people and mm -hmm. stuff like that because they like what I'm doing. Right. Because it's different. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? It's different. And I've always been different. Didn't you just say that yesterday, Kraft? He said, um, you're not going to get too far doing what everyone else is doing. No shade and no tea to anyone else that's no, doing it's it, true, but though. it's like I don't need a thousand Cardis right now. I don't need a thousand little You know what I mean? I mean that's cool because it's something for everybody. And that's why they always said they're different. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Okay, you gotta be different. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like now, that's what makes you stand out. But I think it's um, I think it's easier for us being the ones that came from like the 80s and the 90s because mm -hmm. we didn't have all that bullshit so we don't give a fuck what you think about what right. we're doing and we just doing it we you just know what doing I'm it. so i think it's more the pressures on the young boys and the young girls you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying to have to do it but i do say more women like you like her should show now this is the way you know what i'm saying because a lot of this shit that niggas is doing they're definitely gonna regret it in like 10 years a lot of this shit that's up no, there no, motherfuckers is definitely gonna regret doing that shit as a younger, you know what I'm And saying? I can testify, testify to that because I'm one of those people, like, because like 12 years ago, I was doing what the music they're making now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I was on that. So I did a lot of um, jerk music. I don't know if you're familiar with jerk mm -hmm. music. I did a lot of jerk music. I did a lot of like twerk music, you know what I'm saying? And I did my, my gangster shit at the same time. I do regret making that kind of music. That's why I took down all my videos. I took down the majority of all my songs because I didn't want my daughter or my nieces or anything hearing that. I'm like, oh, well, auntie, auntie did it. Yep. Wow, that's how she <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, auntie, like, and you no. gotta hit them with, don't do what I do, do what I mm -hmm. say. You nah, don't gotta do all that. They're not gonna hear it. Mm -hmm. They're just not gonna hear it. How did you, how 
did you make that decision? Like, yo, I'm not gonna move that way. How did you come about that? My daughter. It was my daughter, definitely, because my daughter started singing one of my songs. Mm -hmm. She was like five, mm -hmm. and I was like. Hold on. Oh, no. Like, no, 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 no. Right. Let's sing right behind you. She was definitely, you know, singing, you know what I mean? Just saying whatever I was saying. And then um, my son, uh, my eldest child, he also was making like that kind of, that gangster shit. And my son was saying things. I was like, okay, no. Nah. Like, mm -hmm. All right, that's it. You know what I mean? Right. That's it. That's it. That's it. So I was like, all right, I got to change everything, which took a long time for me to do because I was so used to being a certain kind of way. So I stopped making music for like almost 10 years. Oh my goodness. Yeah, because I couldn't figure it out. Yeah. I couldn't figure it out. I would try to write something. I'm like, this sounds stupid. I, nope, can't do it. Can't do it. I just couldn't do it. It was just so hard for me. And I was trying to fit in, but I couldn't. I'm like, I can't do this. And then when I first started, you know, doing more conscious music, that was hard too. Because my mind was still on some hood shit. You know, and I'm like, I can't figure this out because right? you know how am I supposed to say what I want to say when I'm still thinking kind of yeah. like this? You know what I mean? That'd be the hard part. It's still hard. It's still spit. hard. It's still hard. <laughs> spit positive yeah. shit, knowing that you still have that negative thoughts. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because I think that was like once I became conscious, like where I was at, like you conscious, but then you still moving this way. It's like you your DNA kind of got to like uh -huh. angel or devil for those that participate. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you it's, are it's definitely, eternal battle. It's definitely in your. It's in, it's ingrained in you. you know, it's embedded in you. Know, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's just like um, it's hard to kind of to reconstruct that. You know what I mean? And change that cycle and, and change those chains, break those chains. It's so hard to do. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And especially when all your people you are testify around you are still Sunday. like testify yeah. on a Sunday. <laughs> All you still people, they still the same way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And I'll tell you one thing: when I came back up north, I was like, damn, like everybody's still the same. Down south, got more, more political people around me. You know what I mean? More, just more vote type, mm -hmm. type of people. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, um, it was just, it, it wasn't as hard for me. Though, so, you okay. know what I'm saying? Because you didn't have the influences, whether they were purposeful or not. Right. It's still an influence. But up here, it's just like, cuz, we finna go slide on this bitch. Like, wow. and I'm like, now you gotta be yeah. like, what's the name in? And, and um, Cuba Goody Goody. Cuba Goody like, Goody. Uh, um, Cuba Goody. Yeah, well, he was like, let me out, though. Remember that? Um, what, 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 Boys in the hood. Oh, yeah. Like, let me out, though. Yep. Mm hmm. Like, wait a minute. Wait, wait. I can't. Mm -hmm. Wait, wait, wait. Nope. Cause first I'm like, right, let's go. No, wait a minute. No, I can't do that. Nope, I can't. Mm -mm. So what brought you back into music when you stopped? Cause I never really left. You know what I'm saying? Even when I stopped making music, I was managing artists. You know. So you didn't leave. You just didn't make it record. I didn't record. You still. Yeah, I didn't create. Create. Mm -hmm. right. I was always still there, managing, um, doing artist development. Um, doing marketing promotions for artists, mainly in Boston. I was down south and helping artists mm -hmm. in Boston. Right, right. You know what I mean? So that's what I was doing. I'm like, and the more I was hearing music, I'm like, oh no, I gotta come out yes. with something. Like, yeah. I gotta come out with something. And I did it. It was calling you like Pookie. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You know, <laughs> and who you feeling coming out of the city right now? Who you like coming out? Coming out of the city right now. Um. but they're not really moving like that. You understand what I'm saying? So I can't really say they're coming out because they're not really mm -hmm. doing nothing right now. 
Do you oh. find that difficult? Sorry. Because you um, you led me into one of my questions, being a woman. Does that make a difference to you at all when you're in this industry? Like, do you have to move differently? Um, yeah. Is that why there's not so many of us? Oh, yeah. We definitely got to move different. Got to move different. Everything is different. Mm -hmm. Got to talk different, walk different. Everything is different. Especially when you enter into those mainstream studios. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So you think Shit. that plays a part in why um, we don't see a lot of women, like, shaking <laughs> like you? Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. And a lot of it got to do with looks. Mm -hmm. Like, that's another fucked up thing, but it got to do with looks. Mm -hmm. It got to do with how they carry themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, um, especially since the majority of the industry is men. Mm -hmm. Men are visual creatures. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? And men don't want to see no ugly ass female rapping and shaking their ass. They don't want to see it. You know? So it's just like, a lot of that has to do with it. You know, it has to do with the looks. So. And then after that comes possibly the way they spit. Yes. Honestly, a lot of people ain't saying nothing real these days, so it just depends. You know what I mean? I think women have to. Um, I hate to say it, but I think they have to be because they're a woman. I'm looking for you to be a ten, but men run in and through the in and out the industry, and they could be a six. Man, some of these guys is a two. Okay, I was trying to be diplomatic, like Miss. Come on, a lot of these guys. <laughs> You, come on, like, talk your shit. I'm just saying, mm -hmm. like, because the, the, these guys in the industry got a lot of goddamn, you know, nerve to be saying a female gotta look a certain way, mm -hmm. and they sitting there looking like someone's auntie. Looking like the Music no. Monster on TV. No, seriously. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm just saying, like, they got a nerve wearing these. Girl, just, just wearing heels, too. Shit. Uh, oh, I ain't seen no heels. If you could, like, when she ain't playing, like, where would you want to push your music? The A, Boston, or the B? Where I want to push it? Yeah. yeah. I'm pushing it everywhere. Okay. Everywhere. But well, if you had a coming out party, you can't be everywhere at once. So we have to be here. Yeah. No boss and shit. Yeah. <laughs> it would have to be here. Coming out party. So yeah. what is your biggest thing, like, when you're in your comfort zone? It sounds like, what, when you're creating? Is it the stage? Writing. Um, my comfort zone? Mm-hmm. Like being in the studio and you just laying it down, or is it when you really just by yourself putting it together? Like, that's definitely what it is. I like being by myself. Mm. I could tell that would be from the way she was talking. Mm. So. I like being by myself. Mm. Like, and I'm a, I'm a, I'm a uh, instant and um, aromatherapy type of person. Right. You know what I mean? I can be talking some shit, but still have some instant yes, going right. and some aromatherapy. Right. You know, and that's kind of how I am. So ambiance. yeah, it's important for me. Mm -hmm. I like lights and you know all that stuff like that. You know, it's just. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm definitely that's me. So how was it um, when you do shows? You get nervous. How was it? Yeah. I'm just going to do it. Okay. No, I, I, I'm not nervous at all. I just go out there and do it. I love the stage. I like that attention. You know what right. I mean? I like to see people like, oh shit, oh shit. You know, I like to see people bopping their head. So I just go out and do it. Mm -hmm. That's it. Like, yeah. no nervousness, no none of that. And I'm a hype girl too. Okay. So yeah. you already have the yeah. yeah, I'm a hype girl. I like being I'll hype up the person who's already on stage before me. Like mm -hmm. that's me. So you told us about um you mentioned peace lungs. That's one of my other questions. You just running my interview. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ryder. I like that one. Can you tell us about that, please? If y'all look check yeah. that shit out. I thought it was really cute. Ryder? Yeah. <laughs> so um alright, so um, there's a dude out here, his name is Guy. I don't know if y'all know Guy Legacy. Okay, so Guy, he's like been in the industry. He does a lot with artists, radios, and all that stuff like that. I've been knowing him for years. So Guy was like, hey, you mob, you, you with the mob and stuff. Like, do you know so-and-so? And I'm like, nah, I don't know him. And he was like, he's from Boston too. And I'm like, what his name? You, you sure you don't know him? Because he was around the way. I'm like, oh, I don't know who that is. You know what I'm saying? So he introduced me to Slums. He said, I want you to do the song with so-and-so, with Slums. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, guy, you know I got a charge a fee, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, and then I'm like, so I don't know, man. That's, at first, I was just kind of brushing it off. I don't know me, and, and, and I ain't never heard about him. That's what I'm saying. And he's a part, he's a part of the mob, too? And I'm like, I don't know. And guy was like, no, he's dope. Like, definitely. Mm -hmm. I was like, all right. So he throws me on the phone with him. That's how guy is. Boom, throw me on the phone with him. Oh, give her, give him your number. I'm not giving this dude my number. I don't even know him. Like, I'm like, the fuck I already told you? you this too. Right? No. So then I, so then Slum started interacting on my social media that same day. And, um, 
and then it made me go i think i went and list watched this but something happened where i looked at something on his instagram mm -hmm. and then um it ended up in the dm and he's like so basically like what's up you know we're gonna i was like you know what give me a call whatever spoke to him he sent me the beat and i got on that shit the next day it was just like that period and he said it's rider rider it's about you know a chick riding for me i'm like all right i'm on it like mm -hmm. that's it i can do that <laughs> That's it. I, that's me. Yep. That's I me. Can do that. That's me. I'm like, I'm definitely that black Bonnie. I'll do that. Like, you know, mm -hmm. like I'm on it. So I did it, and we got that shit done like so quick. You know what I'm saying? Then it was like the video. I'm like, okay, I'm sweating, girl. I'm okay. like, I'm like, <laughs> I can't believe it. It's so hot out here like this in the sun, baking us. But anyway, uh, <laughs> so next was the video, and we're like, okay, where the video gonna be at? And so I'm just like, it's a good idea for us to do it in Florida. I'm like. I'm out there. Mm -hmm. I'm doing it. You know, that's mm -hmm. it. I'm doing it. I'm coming to Florida. We're shooting that video. We're gonna make it pop. You know, and I went out there and we did it. And the video was pretty dope. You know what I mean? How was it doing the video out there? Um. So I'll say one thing. That when I got there, it was so fucking muggy. Right? I got there like eight o'clock at night. It was, still it was muggy as hell. And I was like, you know what? I'm not gonna let this bother me. I don't care about these goddamn bugs sticking to my mm -hmm. skin. I'm about to just write. I was. I, hate <laughs> I was pissed. I hate like, <laughs> I was pissed. Like, it's muggy as fuck out here. Like, whatever. Muggy I'm gonna go do it. Shit. Muggy. And I was like, I don't like this. I don't like this at all, but I'm gonna do this video. Got there and shot the video as soon as I touched down. And that was it. Left the next day. In and out like a robbery. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, um. I got another question about something else, but first we skipped a little bit. Oh yeah, but um, so oh. for all the oh, homies, darn. you single? I know no. bad niggas walking <laughs> on now, they like, yo, why ain't he asking that shit? <laughs> they are there like, whoa. <laughs> I got a special somebody. Oh, oh, right. Okay, okay. Yeah. Well, you That's still gonna awesome. jump in that DM. They are. <laughs> Yeah. Fuck all that. Yeah, I just did an interview with um this radio station. We was talking about that. I was like, I got like a hundred husbands on social media, baby fathers, mm -hmm. you know, fiancés, all mm -hmm. this stuff. They all tell me they married to me. Mm -hmm. they, they're my baby fathers. I'm like, yeah, I never even seen you in my life. Mm -hmm. You know? But okay. Uh, yeah, all right. Make the movie bigger. All right. If you want to be my baby father, all right, fine. Mm -hmm. I don't know how that works, but that's okay. <laughs> whatever you, you know, whatever you, say, whatever, whatever you say, whatever you say, my my fiancés and stuff like that. It's so good. Shout out to y'all. And to all the dudes that be wanting, like, wondering on songs, how do they reach out to you and what is the steps to get you to get on a song that they don't know? So definitely, like I said, I gave the, the information, the contact information, but I'll tell you one thing. When it comes to dudes, because they be so funny, they be so funny, if you're really serious, if it's really about business, you'll go straight to that email, baby. That's it. I basically fine. told you. Yep. I'm going to repeat it. If you're serious, go to the email. You don't gotta slide in the DM. We're talking about, oh, you fly shorty and try to None finagle the bagel. We gotta, um. None of that. Yeah. Ain't yeah. that shit like hard to do? What? Email? Like, you want the business, but you want to see what too. It's kind of like. You can definitely say hi. You know what I'm saying? Like, like okay, if you go on my DM, you can say hi. I'm about to email you because I want to do something. What I do, I said, we gotta start having more respect for women. Business and what they own, yes, really like, about the right proper channels because niggas do, you know, a lot of niggas will try to, okay, I want you on the product, I want you on the song, and then it goes to like, you're bad, like, yes, you're bad, Girl, you should, it goes so. to, you're bad, like, damn, how long you been in Boston? Like, that's what it goes to, and I yes. just stop talking to you, cold that's it, I'm not responding to no more messages at that point. As soon as you tell me that I'm bad that I'm sexy, you do look good. Any of those words, mm -hmm. I'm not responding to you no more. Because you're not, even if you yeah. think it, you're not serious. You're trying yeah. to find an end. Yeah, I'm not talking to him no more. That's it. That's it. You done lost your chance or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, that's it. And who's some of the people that you have been on the song with besides Tony? Well, m most recently for this new project, um, it's been Bay Holla. Oh. Shout out, Bay. Yes. Bay it's been out. Slums. Mm -hmm. He Slums. And have it of my beat. Shout out have it cool. Have it doing good work too. Yeah. Oh my god, yes. So those are the three people mm. I've done music with. And Shanta. Okay. Yes. So you said this latest project, what is that? What's my my latest project is Exism. So um yeah, I'm just getting that together right now. My EP and my LP. My EP's already together. I had to postpone the um, album release or whatever. But, well, the EP release. And then I'm going to actually do my full-blown album release on my birthday, December. 
I'm not sure yet. It's been coming December 18th. Okay. Sad Yeah, it is. Send the invite to where we it out. I will love it. <laughs> I know we cooking, but tell us about the body shop. Oh, my business. Yes. Body shop. Just everything, honey. <laughs> so body shop, um, that's a holistic medicine slash body sculpting practice that I own. I also have one in Atlanta. Um, so we help people slim and trim their bodies non-invasively. Mm -hmm. uh, so basically there's no downtime, no, nothing like that of that nature. I'll have you, you come in one way and leave out another way. Basically. Mm -hmm. Give me six weeks with you, you'll look like a totally different person. You know what I mean? If you have patience, then come on to me. You know patience I mean? and discipline? Yeah. Okay. Cause come on to me, because it definitely takes discipline as mm -hmm. well. You know what I mean? So, um, I have That's herbs. I'm trying to be on the video tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I have um, natural herbs or whatever um, that I offer people to help them. I have my own um, tummy on flat, flat tea to help people, you know, lose weight and so forth. Um, I have my own waist trainer, fitness line, period. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, I also do, I do life coaching for relationships, so I'm real big on self-love, black love, etc. Um, so I do that as well at my shop. So that's like mainly the main things we do at Body Shop. And how do you get into that? What made you want to do that besides rapping too? Uh, which part? The, the Body Shop. The like, body, yeah, not rapping, so Body Shop and the okay, Life Okay, so, so the Life, okay, so let's talk about the Life Coaching. I always wanted to be a counselor, ever since I was a little girl. So um, I went to school and went and got my doctor's in counseling psychology. But I don't practice counseling psychology. I'm not into the whole um, the contemporary medicine. Mm -hmm. right. I'm not into that. Right. Or the conventional medicine, I should mm -hmm. say. I'm not into that anymore. So I'm more of a holistic person. So I said I can help people more holistically by doing coaching. So I kept doing that. And um, I decided to become a full-blown coach in 2014. Um, so I also do business coaching as well. I okay. help people open their businesses and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, almost like financial, you know, advisory and so forth. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Success coaching is what I call it. So as far as like, um, and that goes into like the holistic medicine part. I wanted to, I was an RN. I was, I was going to school to become a doctor. I was like, nope. At the same time with my, with my counselor psychology, I was like, I don't want to do nothing with Western medicine. medicine. Right. Nothing. So I was like, that's it, you know? So I decided to go to school for holistic medicine. And um, I said, I'm gonna help people holistically, help them, you know, the right way. So they won't need prescription mm -hmm. medication. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I started doing that. And then the body sculpting came in. The body sculpting came in when I was um, working for a cosmetic surgery center in Atlanta. Okay. And I said, okay, this is cool, but it's causing people to be hurt, people need medicine, people in pain. I want to do something different. You know what I'm saying? I actually started when I was in Vegas. I started doing like um, cavitation and radio frequency mm -hmm. because I heard about it then. Yep. A lot of the models and so forth were doing it, yep. celebrities. Mm -hmm. So I started dipping and dabbing it then, but it was like I didn't have my own place to do it, you know, and stuff like that. So then like when I got to Atlanta, it was like, hmm, this is the home for black entrepreneurs. Yes. You know what I mean? That shit's the home. This is the home. <laughs> this is where I can do that it. That shit motivates you. It did. Atlanta make you be like, nigga, if I don't do shit, I ain't shit. Yeah, it did. <laughs> how can you be, my thing was, how can you be black and broke in Atlanta? Real shit. You know? Like, you, you shouldn't be black and broke. Like, when I knew that shit was for real, I was down there on car wash, like, one corner that shit was like 10, and that shit went down to like $3. Every mm -hmm. light I had, motherfucker, nah, bro, bro, I threw that shit for $4. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, these niggas hustle. And it even made me like a different hustler, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, staying down there was like, oh, now nah, you gotta get to the money. These niggas hustle everything, like you said, rap, body sculpture, everything. Everything. You know everything's a hustle there. Everything. 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 ain't limited to just, I'm a rapper, that's it. So many people just be stuck in that lane, you know what I'm saying? Even the hair shops. Mm -hmm. Like, the hair shops are hustle there. Weave salons, weave this, weave. I remember when it started booming in Atlanta, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? I'm like, damn. There's like shops just for weed. Mm -hmm. Just weed, that's it, yeah, yeah. You know? Wow. I'm like, damn, like, and I did do, I did, I did do hair, and I'm like, no, nah, I don't want to do that. 
Like, I can't see myself doing hair all day, every day. Nope, that's not me. You know what I mean? But I've seen it. I've seen, I know girls that actually open up their shop and they're successful there. You know what I mean? I'm like, damn, like, me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But, but at the same time, around that time, it started booming. That's when that whole, like, the fake body started coming out around that time. Right. You know what I mean? Everybody was wearing weave. Everybody was wearing hella makeup. Everybody got big asses. Everybody was doing their titties. So all that stuff came in around the same time. So that's why the weave shops were mm -hmm. booming in there. Right. Everybody need a weave. Everybody want a goddamn wave of weave in there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> out, of, out, of the, out of the businesses that you do, which one? you like the most, you get the most satisfying out of Um, that must be like choosing one of your kids. That like. is. <laughs> so, I would say I like the most. Okay, not when it comes to money. Mm -hmm. When it comes to the, the most, right? yeah. mm -hmm. I like doing holistic medicine. Okay. I make more money doing body, you know, body sculpting. But I like holistic medicine. Because I like to help people change their way of thought. You know, and I was going to say, what do the holistic medicine, what do that pertain to? Mind, body, and soul. You know, people come in distraught, feeling some whatever kind of way. They might, for example, when my clients come to me for body sculpting, I still do like some type of holistic therapy on them at the same time. Mm -hmm. I'm talking to them, I'm coaching them at the same time, doing free services to them. And they leave out feeling so positive, so they're more uplifted, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? You can see a more of a bright light around them. When they come in, they're dark, they, they, they're feeling like they ain't shit. They feel like they don't look good enough for their wife or their husband. Um, you know, all because I deal with men too, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They're feeling like just low when they come in there, you know? You being a person in that, do you think we as like everybody don't compliment out of a half or, you know, like a lot of people yep. hear a lot of good shit throughout the day. Because I noticed that like when you just kick it with anybody and you just talk to them, you tell them, you know, good shit about themselves, whatever, a motherfucker leave me feeling different. And I've always thought like, I know it's me passing the message, but it's also, and this motherfucker don't have nobody around him telling him that you are this, you can make it there. You can go, you know, when I look at a lot of, because a lot of us be walking around fucked up every day. Yeah, you know, affirmations are important. Mm -hmm. right. Affirmations are important in relationships. You have to, you should, you should absolutely tell your significant other every day how good they look. Mm -hmm. Even on their worst days, you need to compliment them because that will constantly make them feel higher. Because mm -hmm. people wake up, you know, we wake up sometimes, we just feel like the low is the low. You know what I mean? Like you got to tell your significant other how much they look good, how much they are worthy. You know what I mean? How important they are into this society, how important they are to you, or you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. How how much they're worth. You know what I mean? You got to remind them because we need constant reminders every day in life. Nothing wrong with that. Every day, okay. every day, it helps with our self esteem. It helps with it just helps with our way of life. You know what I mean? And that's what I really like, believe. It helps with the way of life. I feel. You know, our way of life. The motherfuckers was more like that with each other. A lot of motherfuckers were more different in their day. You know what right. I'm saying? But I think when people wake up, it starts in the house from hearing bullshit or going through bullshit, then immediately going out into the world. You know? Right. Make sure you tell your significant other, have a great day. Mm -hmm. Have a process, productive, and positive day. You know? Check on them throughout the day. I mean, tell the women that. Stop trying to believe his nuts, man, and believe his mind. Yeah. Like so many women just think, I'm going to set him out empty in his day. No, and his brain but he's hungry. Much, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. This motherfucker go out there and kill somebody or, do, or yeah. get killed. You know what I'm right. saying? Right. I be telling women that, like, yo, start sending your man out with encouraging shit, with right. horrible shit, you know what I'm saying? Right, empty his nuts and fill his heart. Uh, That's what you gotta hashtag. do. Hashtag, yes. Empty his nuts and fill his heart. Yes. I'm gonna put that on. Because I be you telling them that a lot of niggas, you know, right. even when women be like, yo, men don't want to change, you know, um, tell a lot of women, yeah, you can love a man into some different shit. Mm -hmm. Just the love mm -hmm. you give him will change him it without will. you even trying to force him. It will. You know what it I'm saying? And I tell a lot of women, I don't think because they never had it, they don't believe it. You know? It, it's true. It's true. It's true. And then a lot of a lot of women have become so hard. Ooh. Ooh. Oh Lordy, so hard. <laughs> yeah, I hate them bitches. <laughs> I hate them bitches. Let all them bitches drown. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but it is it's so crazy how hard women are. They like, so hard. You know, yeah. They even think when they say, like, they can't hurt me. I'll be like, do you think that sounded womanly? You know what I'm saying? Like, the whole, like, 
sexy shit is over, like being soft and, mm -hmm. and I tell women that it's like fucking with some women is like fucking with your own. I don't think it happens on purpose. Like everyone's in control of their own self, obviously. But right, master self. Yeah. But it's like it's a defense mechanism. She don't really feel like that. You can say, oh, your mama and she'll start crying. She she's not that tough. But some of these chicks do feel like that. Wow. Some of these chicks dead ass are hard as hell. Oh bullshit. Some of these bitches really Seriously. That is like they don't give a fuck. Like uh, just don't care. But I bet they don't want to be. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. It's Not funny. that it's a man's fault, but like something made you that way, feel oh, yeah. that way. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Something makes creates people into certain people. You know what, what I mean? Do you, do you think that's something that can be fixed, or you think that's just some shit yeah. we gotta do? It's definitely something that can be fixed, but they gotta have to want to fix it themselves. You know what I mean? Can't no one fix that but them. How is that when you deal with a woman like that and you're trying to get her to see? What are those steps? Like you're trying to tell her because a lot of people what I notice on um, with women they'll tell you about everything else except for themselves they hear everything about anything else except for them so it's hard to kick it with a woman like what is that process like so I would say for a man that deals with that's basically a toxic woman um because that's exactly what that is she's toxic um it's up to you it's solely up to you to keep dealing with her because I tell my brothers to leave them alone and, and, and tell them to go get their shit right. You know what I mean? They have to do self-healing. They have to heal before they try to enter relations with anyone else. Someone hurt them. Whether it was their mama, their daddy, their ex-boyfriend, their baby father, whoever. Mm -hmm. Someone hurt them. Because we're not born like that. Mm -hmm. they, at one point in time, they were soft. Mm -hmm. At one point in time, they were loving. Mm -hmm. Someone hurt them to the point where they became cold. And they gotta heal. And they cannot enter new relationships with that type of heart and that type of mind because it's only going to destroy the person that they're with. And it rubs off on them. Somehow, some way, it rubs off on them. Yeah, it does. It rubs off. And then the person it rubs off on, they start realizing rubbed off on when the next person tells them, mm -hmm. damn, why you say that? Yeah, right. why you don't pass it on? Right. Contagious. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. And so, I think sometimes people have it without even, like you said, for a minute, without even know they have that toxic shit in them now. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like it done rubbed off. It rubbed off. So, how you doing? So they gotta, um, they have to definitely go through self healing. You know what I mean? And get all that stuff together within them. And then start dating someone else. But if you're a man, you're going through that, you know, of course, don't just leave her off rip. You know, try to work with her a little bit. And when I say a little bit, and when you start noticing it, and I say a little bit, you should notice it immediately, honestly. It shouldn't be nine months later that you're, you're with this woman. That should be within that month. You know, if you notice within that month, like, you notice it, maybe day seven that y'all are talking and dating. By day 21, if you know she's still like that, you need to just cut her off. Especially if you told her, hey, you know, that's not good, you know, this is not a good look, I'm not, I'm not feeling this, like, why did you say this? Like, that's not, you know, and she still keeps doing it? You need to cut her off. And if she really loved you or really liked you or really filmed you, she'll think about that and then work on herself. And then she'll come back to you. Because we come back. Yeah. <laughs> we come back to we do. We come back to some good dick, some good, a good man, we're coming back. Wow. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, she'll come back. What do you think is, like, easier when you in a situation, a man or a woman? Like, when it comes to, you know, trying to Heal. put them on to they self, yeah, yeah. I honestly think, um, from my personal experience, I think it's easier for me to help men heal. A lot of women, like we were just saying, are real cold. You know what I mean? The men, they'll have that block for a minute, but men get soft real fast. Uh -huh. Real fast, the men like brace down. I believe that too. You know? Well. And it's easier, and then once they break down, you can get right in. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You can just move right on in, like, damn, okay, this is what's bothering you, this is what's hurting you, how can I fix this? With, you know, how can I make this better? How can I make this right? A man will only put up a, a wall but for so long, and then he just lets it out. And I've noticed that with every man, my clients, my exes, you know, the person that I'm with, like, after a while, they just, you know what I'm saying? They just let it down. Exhale. Yeah. And it, it's never up for long, either. Mm -hmm. I know with every person I've dealt with, like, as far as a man, like I said, business or relationship-wise, within the first few weeks, they already, like, uh, yeah, early. Uh, <laughs> yeah, early. Because men, like, men, men want to 
let it out. You just gotta give them the process to let it out. And they gotta trust you. Yeah, they have to trust you. They want that shit then because they want it, we realize they want how it, yeah. we walk around and move and then view and shit. So we be like, oh, hold on, I gotta check it. But a lot of people can't take that shit in the right way. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So depending on who you're dealing with, women take that shit in the wrong way. Yeah, a lot of a lot of women feel like when a man expresses himself, he's a bitch or something like that. Wow. Or he's a, like he's a bitch. They feel wow. like he's a bitch or uh, just a crybaby or whatever. Like, that's really? Why lot, that's why a lot of oh, men don't like to oh express God. themselves oh. because they they because they hearing that they're a bitch for expressing themselves. Oh. Well, you hear about it within like a week, like oh, and then you was motherfucking fucked up over mm -hmm. this shit. That's how that shit. So I'm not saying it's a lie, but just in my experience, like shit. Oh. Jesus, Beyonce, Buddha, whoever, bring me a man that can express his emotions. Girl, look. Please, I'm, I promise I won't come. No, like, but a lot of dudes, what it is, is um, the backlash that men be scared of. You know what I'm saying? They don't because want to seem like a pussy or anything right. like that. Mm -hmm. You got to make, that's what, and, but see, that's where the every day giving up that when you leave out, that's what it builds. It builds that trust. Now we see it. Okay, so when I do yeah. feel this way, she's going to take me. But if we already don't have that building, then why the fuck are we going to? Right. You know, in Vogue song, giving us something you can yes. feel? And then the next lines were to let him know his love is real. Mm -hmm. You right. got to give your man something he can feel. You know what I mean? Because then he'll express himself. He'll open up to him, to you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then this he knows. Like, like, you just talked the whole song. The, <laughs> yeah, uh -huh. she said the whole song just mm -hmm. talking like Even that. though it was real seductive and they was doing this on stage, yes. but it's the lyrics. It's the lyrics. You know, that's that a uh, Rita Franklin song too. Yeah. Yep. So it came from mm -hmm. somewhere. Yeah, man, the lyrics. Know. The lyrics hit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Give your man something he can feel, and mm -hmm. it's not all about vagina. Mm -hmm. Seriously. Yeah, we gotta get her on the podcast. Yeah, because we went yeah, into we a, we got a, a free session out of you right quick. No, y'all got a free session. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. I can, I can do this all day to talk about this, like all that good stuff, you know. And like I said, I'm all about, you know, love and you know, just that, that, that union and that unity between the man and the woman, and you know, all that stuff like that. So yeah, like um. I'll, I'll talk like this to my partners, my homeboys and stuff. They look like, damn, damn, like, <laughs> damn, like. Just read but me. I, I just want you to be better. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I want you to be better. That's, that's all. Cool. I don't want you to be out here fucking up. You know what I'm saying? I want you to be better. And I want you to get you a, a woman that's better. Simple as that. Mm -hmm. You know? And I just want you to be happy. I want to see you in love and mm -hmm. all that good stuff. And if you decide to get married, then get married. Don't, don't. But do whatever you do, but be happy with it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, um, that's just how I am. Yeah, we definitely doing gonna do pod after the interview. One day. You're not leaving on time soon, right? No, I'm, I'm, right. I'm here to stay in Boston for a while. Okay. Right here. Definitely. So what can we expect out of you coming musically? What you got coming out there? Um, so, as y'all know, I did the song Rider with Slums. I just released my um, video, I Want You, like a couple months oh, yeah, ago. Yeah, I Yeah, I just did that. Um, I'm getting ready to re-release my song, Loving You. So that's going to be my next video that I release. But I'm still going to be pushing I Want You. That's the main song I'm pushing. That's okay. the main one. That's the main one. Loving You is just like the follow-up to I Want You. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Um, so it's another kind of like R&B-ish, hip-hop feel. Right. You know what I mean? Um, and then eventually me and Havoc gonna do a video to my song, the, the other song I got. Yes, yes, yes. And you be doing any shows in the hood? I haven't actually. I haven't um, done any songs, no shows here. Mm -hmm. Not yet. But and I will. You want to? I definitely will. Yeah, I definitely I, mean, I have nothing. Get in tune, like, with yeah. Shows yeah, I'm trying to see what's going on, what's happening, what the people really feeling, what they really like, and I'm gonna do some, you know. But you I ain't got no problem performing there, you know what I mean? You heard it at all. Because people, I mean, they're playing my music, you know right. what I'm saying? I can see it on, like, who's playing what. I can see, you know, like, you the different graphics exactly and stuff. Right, yeah. Yeah. So I can see I can see the city supporting, me, you know what I'm saying? So it's just like, yeah, I have no problem. It's just, it depends on, yes. It depends on the event, mm -hmm. who's doing it, where it at, because you gotta be careful out here. Yeah. You know what I mean? And especially because I was like a wanderer, so I was called, you know what I mean? And I was going between different hoods growing up. So I know people everywhere. Mm -hmm. right. And I can't, and it's unfortunately, everywhere can't come to my show. 
You know what I'm saying? Every wave can't come to my show because this person got people, this person, this set got people, this set, or this turf or block or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So I can't have everybody at my show like I would want everyone at my show. You know? He gonna work that out. Question we ask everybody, um, any label from when rap started to now, or side of day, what piece of gold are you doing? It would definitely be infamous, my. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Nobody said the mob. Yeah. Nobody said Nobody the mob so said far. The mob, yeah. Oh, it would definitely be like, yeah. So I mean, you grew up on like mob deep and all that. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. You uh, couldn't tell me I wasn't in mob deep or the oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it would definitely be my two. I, I, I mean, I've been signed before, and um, now my only thing I'm going to deal with is the mob. You know what I mean? So what is your plans like with just your music? Is it like stay independent, get to a label? I mean, I'm cool with being independent, but if I go to a label, it's gonna be mob, like I said. So, but I, I like the the mob independent type of thing. You know what I'm saying? I like that. I don't want to really deal with the stuff that is going on in the mainstream, mm -hmm. you know, industry. I don't want to deal with all that. And how was that like being an artist and um, managing artists? So, right now my managing one. But when I was an artist and managing artists, it well, at first it was a little difficult. Because you know, I had to focus on myself too and focus on someone else. Right. But then I figured out a way to do it, and that is by making music with them so I can promote them at the same time. At the same time, that's dope. That must be, I can see what you're saying, but it must be difficult because you have to do it, your, do it yourself and other people. Mm -hmm. But then at the same time, you have an artist mind, so you know how to relate to them. I do. As opposed to me, that I'm a fan, I might command somebody, but I've never done what you do. So you yeah. know, you have the inside track. Yeah, it's, it's, it was hard at first though, mm -hmm. you know, it was kind of, it was a little difficult. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, damn, I gotta put out my stuff too, how am I gonna, mm -hmm. oh, I know what to do. Do it like this, because mm -hmm. now, my followers, my fans are seeing this person is building their fan base, and now their music's going up, and, you know what I'm saying? And it's just kind of how Yeah, everybody, everyone's numbers go up that way, so. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm Everybody gonna eats. Do. Mm -hmm. That's oh. right, that's right. <laughs> All right, tell the people where you can find us again. So again, you can find me on all music platforms, Fari X. Twitter and Facebook, I am Fari X. Instagram, Fari X Wisdom. I'm just Fari X. You can Google me too. Um, also, also, if you are a author that needs publishing, I do publishing. I also do editing, I edit books. I edit several books. Um, I have 10 books out of my own, you can do with me. Um, so check all that stuff out. I need all that help, no, all that support. Jesus, <laughs> one stop should break. Yes, I, I, I definitely, I, I'm into the editing, so. Do you have a brick and mortar? Do I? Um, yeah, like in Boston? Yes. Can you tell us where it is? So, not yet. Okay, okay, okay. Not yet. All right. Maybe on the podcast. Yes. Yeah, I should be ready by then. That, um, I should be ready by then. Okay. That's in the middle of writing books too, and they've been trying to like get somebody to like look over it. One oh, you of my close friends that's on the pod with us, he couldn't make it. Um, he has something to do important, but um, he's like halfway done with his book. And he was looking for that type of job, like somebody okay. to look it over. And, you know yeah, I, mean? I definitely. I have a whole website. My business been out since 2008 for you know the publishing and all that stuff like that. Um, I've been doing this for a long time, you know what I mean? For a very long time. I don't want awards and everything for my publishing and my editing. So, yeah. We definitely won't get you on the podcast, and you know, I'm definitely going to reach out to you. Mm -hmm. You talk a lot of shit I like, and I yeah. see we can definitely get together and do some business with each other, you know what I'm saying? Sounds good. I love it. Uh, <laughs> Who are you definitely with? more than I thought we were yeah. going to get. Yeah. Cool. So I thought she was going to be all quiet. You thought I was going to be quiet? Uh, yes. I'm definitely not quiet. And then from the picture you look all quiet, I was like, ah, we gonna be pulling tea. I'm not a boring person. I like to talk. Now I'm you can a talk talker. Word, no mm. bullshit. I have my own podcast too. That's another thing. Oh, that's so cool. wait, can you just tell us everything you do? Because oh, by the way, <laughs> I write books. Like, <laughs> wait a minute. Right there, you just sneak this shit Run down the slashes. I do a podcast too, but um, it's not like what y'all do. Sometimes I might interview some artists or whatever. Um, but my podcast is really it's called The Bill with Fari X. So um. I interview a lot of conscious folks okay. and um, religious people, so we can hear different people's point of views and what they're doing and why they're doing certain things, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And how is it making them better and how is it going to help our community, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? That's what I do. And every now and then I you know, put some music on there and I'm interviewing artists and so forth because at the same time I like to promote 
up and coming black businesses, black entrepreneurs, mm-hmm. and entertainers. Mm-hmm. So, and my podcast is about our people. So, you know what I mean? Where can you find that podcast? On YouTube. It's on YouTube. Um, the Bill with Fari X. Um, and it streams everywhere, though. Like, okay. Subscribe Yeah, I got to. I don't know if I already did that or not, but I'm going to do it. Uh, if I did it. Yes, but we still on camera. <laughs> we still on camera. So we can just tell. Right. So yeah, this is the shirt that they gave me, y'all. Merch. Look at that. Yes. Yes. Look at that shirt. Got the little Massachusetts on there. Yes, it does. You see that? All mass love. You see this? All my family in the Bay State, <laughs> Bay Area, ATL. We yes. It's all love. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, we taking the show. On so the road. I will be wearing the shirt on something, yeah, just to you. um represent because that's what I do when I got the shirt. You. Yes, no problem. Listen, you could have been anywhere in the world, but you let us pull up on you. First of all, you see me outside? Yes. Uh, she let us pull up. Uh, so I appreciate that. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you were scared with us. Oh, your shirt matches. Okay. It does, it does, it does. <laughs> um, this is your style podcast of Machine Gun Johnny, that's Fari X, and yes. little Steven Spielberg behind the camera, <laughs> Boston Crab. It was nice, it was good. Thank you.